In this lesson, we're going to be learning about two topics that are related to your timeline. The first topic is auto ripple, and the second topic is group editing. These two are essential when you're working with multiple tracks, especially for times where your timeline is just crowded and you want to work efficiently. So let's get started and see how these two things work. I'm going to import some videos into my timeline. Filmora created the proxy files automatically because I asked it to in my preferences. Let's import our videos right here. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven videos right here. Let's grab some additional things to put on top, like overlays and filters. Let's go to cinematic. And uh, I'm going to add the 8 millimeter dirt uh, overlay. There we go. This is without the effect. This is with the effect. And let's just uh, stack things on top until we have a lot of tracks that we can work with. Maybe lower the opacity. Let's add a this uh, frame. And there we go. So I have four tracks right now. I could keep on adding more, but what we're trying to do here is create a realistic situation where you would be editing a video. Because when you're editing a video, realistically, you would have more than one track. You're putting audios, videos, overlays, filters, maybe some uh, elements and split screens. So you're just working with multiple tracks at the same time. And we're just trying to recreate a situation that would contain that many tracks. Let's put some titles. And now let's say I want to change the speed of this video. Select the video, head over to speed. Let's make it faster. Notice how all the other videos that were on the same track moved to the left. Because the new duration is now, let's put the playhead here. The new duration is now 14 seconds. If I hit command C, this was our original duration. So again, you can see all the videos are here. If I make this faster by two times, everything jumps back to the new duration of my first video. So this is what auto ripple does. Without the ripple, they would just uh, they would just sit at the place that they were. Let me drag some elements and put them on top. Let's put a skateboard right here, a skull over here. So what happens when I have auto ripple? If I have a video like this where I have different types of footage on one track and then just delete one of the footage, let's select this, hit delete, Filmora is going to automatically remove that gap. If we didn't have auto ripple turned on, let's hit command C, select this button to turn it off and delete the video again, this is the gap that I will get. And that way I would have to select the gap and delete it myself, which as you can imagine would be really time consuming if I had a big project. So that's why you want to turn on auto ripple. But there are times where you want that gap. Let's take a look at an example, command Z. I will bring this back. This means turned on, this is turned off. Let's bring it back. I will grab an audio and place it right over here. Get rid of the rest. 
just align it with my video. Let's say I'm looking to create a gap between my videos to have this song play. If I have auto ripple turned on, delete this, you can see that I no longer have that gap. And then I would just have to grab my videos, drag them here to get my gap back. But if I turn off auto ripple, hit command Z, turn this off, delete this again, I have my gap. So there are times where you would want to turn on auto ripple and other times where you just don't want to do it. Let's hit command Z. When it comes to speed, auto ripple is also helpful. Let's bring this back, turn it on, double click on one of my videos and head over to speed. If I speed this video up, you can see again, the videos moved back to the new duration of this particular video. That's only happening because we have this checked. Command Z, turn this off this time and again, speed up the video. So now I have a gap again because I turned off Ripple. So depending on whether you want the gaps or whether you want to get rid of them, you would work with this and this. This applies to your entire timeline. This only applies to your speed because you're in speed right now. That was auto ripple. Let's learn about another helpful timeline tool and that is group editing. As you can see, we have seven video tracks. And if I just want to move these around, it would be rather difficult because I would have to select them all like this, move them around like so. Sometimes I may miss one of the elements and not realize until it's too late. When you're working with multiple tracks, this tool will come in handy. Command C to get our original stuff back. Instead of selecting tracks like this manually, I can select the related tracks, right click, or elements in this case, and keep group. They changed color, and now instead of doing this, I can just click once, and I am getting both. You can see. Click away. Click once. Both are selected. This is a great tool and it helps a lot with multiple tracks. So you can group related tracks together and save yourself the time of moving them around. For example, I have three effects right here. Let's select them all, right click, keep group. They change color. So instead of yellow, which indicates that they're separate tracks, it's now green meaning that all of these three tracks are now in one group. If I click on any of them, I will select them all. And this way I can select them all, hit maybe duration, change them to maybe 10 seconds. I can do it to all at the same time, just by a single click. Instead of just dragging the clips, holding down command to deselect, and going through all of those other things. After you have finished with these effects, click once, right click, ungroup. So now they're back to being individuals. You can see one, two, three. I can just move them separately and not in a group. Let's try this with some videos. I will group all of these together. Right click, keep group. Select them again. Maybe I'd like to head over to color match and just work with the colors for all three videos. Let's grab a reference frame. I'll grab this one, hit match. 
let's lower the level, hit OK. And now I have color matched all three videos at the same time. They are still in a group, so I can just click once and move them around as I please. So let's look at a real life example. Let's say this is the first part of my video. I'm done with it. I have color graded and arranged everything in the perfect order. If I want to work with the second half and I just don't want to disturb or move these by accident, I can group all of them together. Let's keep group. And that way I can uh, just select this as one group, move them around. Maybe I want to switch this with another thing. I can do it using groups. Command C, Command V, and I can duplicate it for another uh, reason. Maybe I want to test out a different effect on one and see if it's better. You can copy and paste and just work with them. You can even group these. You can group as many video tracks and elements as you'd like. There are no limits. You can see one click, all of them appear. Let's bring back the original order. Command Z. Select that button to zoom in. You can also use grouping while you're splitting your videos. Let's group these three. And I want to split this part. Click the scissor once. And it's going to ask me whether I want to split the clips as a group or just ungroup it and work with that one clip. You can turn this on. Let's keep the group. Now this new section is still part of my group. You can see I have four instead of three. Command Z. Let's try that again, but this time ungroup the videos. Keep group. Split. And now let's hit ungroup. So now I have one, two, three, four different segments instead of one group because I have separated the clips before splitting my video. If you want to keep them in a group, then there's no need to ungroup them. So what you can do is group them and then keep group and not this because then you would have to group them again unless you're trying to get rid of that one uh, segment. Keep group. And I can just work with these four parts. Maybe I wanted to split this part for a effect. Let's add a random effect on this one video. There we are. So this is the original. This is with the effect. Let's try something that's more visible. Glitch. And there's my glitch. So you could just keep the group. And if you want to get rid of a part, just right click, ungroup, and delete one of the videos. You can also delete an effect and not the video itself. Right click, delete effects. So now I don't have the VHS glitch on this video. And I didn't have to double click on the video. Let's hit Command C, ungroup. It's already ungrouped. If I were to delete this myself, I would have to double click and head over to video effects and then delete this here. But if I'm working with multiple effects on my track, I could just select them all and then hit delete effects. Let's try that again, but this time, uh, but this time with more videos, add an effect on each of these videos. You can see they have this icon right here, meaning that they have an effect. You can see this one doesn't. There we go. Effect one, effect two, three, and four. Select them all and hit delete effects, like so. And those were some helpful tools in Filmora's timeline that you can use to make your editing easier and more efficient. 
Now let's move on to the next lesson.